Welcome to another edition of the Coach Ken Erickson Show. Nothing but wins since we last visited with you. The Bulls have 17 in a row. They're 25 and 9. They're getting ready for conference play on the road in Greenville, North Carolina this weekend. Coach, we're going to go back and take a look at a couple of really nice wins for the Bulls. Starting off last Friday, second game of two. Georgia Tech comes in and the Bulls get the shutout and the bats were working all day long. You know, you're, you're going back over our schedule and it's, you know, whatever day is today and then whatever game that was, I mean, they're all blending together. So, you know, you're going to have to forgive me today if I don't come up with the specifics. It's not, it's not early onset anything except a long season. But, you know, we, we came out against their pitcher who was pretty good. Um, drop ball pitcher, change speeds left and right. and. You know, I thought we did a pretty good job of putting the ball in play and getting the little guys on base, the speedsters, and then, and then get some big hits. And uh, come out in first inning and get some big hits is pretty important. But Erica Nunn was hot that weekend and hot at home that day. I think she had a home run in the first game, and then she hits a home run later on against Georgia Tech. So, um, and threw the ball well. And, uh, you know, she, she didn't throw that many innings in game one. We decided to start her in game two. Um, she did a nice job. And then Susan coming in relief uh, for that game. Uh, it's just coming back to me now. Uh, Susan coming to relief in that game, doing a really, really nice job of fishing up for us. Bulls get the shutout win. Went on to Clearwater Saturday, expecting to play two. The weather didn't cooperate. Bulls did get a win over Kent State. And then right back here, you wound up playing Marist in a rescheduled game. And again, a shutout and a run rule victory. Yeah, you know, the Kent State game, um, just to touch upon it, that, that's a really, really good team. Highly ranked RPI team. and. Uh, they go out one nothing on us early, and uh, you know we steal home in a double steal situation in the fifth inning, and the doors open up, and Monica Santos three doubles in one game, which ties a, a school record, a game record. Uh, but she was hot, and then she she drives in two more later on to put us up three one. They come back and tie it up, and we put the pressure on them with speed, and they threw it away, and we we end up winning four to three. But uh, that was a really good victory because that was one of those games where we've had. You know the blowouts. You know where we're winning six, seven, eight, nothing, and and shutting people out. And that that team came out and punched it early, and we came back and, and uh, did really, really, really well against them. And you know in our sport, it's so funny that you know because it's not a a power five football name, people don't give it much credence. And if you take a look at the RPI, you know the James Madisons, the Kent States, you know um, uh, the Valparaiso, all those type of schools have been very competitive over a long period of time, and so it's important to understand who has pitching and who does not. And um, Hofstra being another one of those type of programs. So, you know, it's, it's good to see uh, us battle against really, really good competition and, and still come away on the good side. During this last week or so, we have really seen the speed on the base paths come around. The Bulls stealing with a lot more regularity. I'm sure part of that is the health of Kristen Wyckoff, who's won the conference player of the week this week, has stolen a lot of bases uh, in the last few games. Mm -hmm. But it's great to see the Bulls getting back to that. It is. You know, Kristen Wyckoff, who we kid, is the oldest, youngest person we've ever seen walk um, around the campus. You know, she, she looks like she's you know, got a cane or she looks like she's, you know, got the walker. That's, you know, she's bent over and her legs are bothering her all the time and this and that. And then she comes out on the ball field and it's, it's like the fountain of youth hits her. And, and uh, you know, but she can run like crazy. And getting her back healthy and then putting her at the top of the lineup and then such a great back control person behind her and Julie Weber and then having Aston hit in front of um, Kristen in a nine spot and getting on base right now has made other teams very, very weary. And they don't know how to play them, you know, because Kristen could go deep as she did in Clearwater. She went over the fence you know, for a home run. Julie's got three or four this year, you know, and then Mia Fung hitting behind her. So you got some speed, power um, in that in those four areas. And that's right before Spivey gets to the plate and Erica behind her. So, you know, it's gelling right now. They're doing well. They just got to keep humble. You're also getting your best pitching of the season. Predominantly, the big three, Wysocki and Nunn and Eggins have all been outstanding. They have been. You know, they're attacking the plate more. And if you take a look at the the strikeout walk ratios, you know, they've started to separate quite a bit since the first 10 games of the year, which they were around 50-50, and, and now there's a separation going on. And it's also been a tremendous uh, statistical analysis. If you take a look at it, the pitch counts in the games have gone down, and so they're attacking the plates, and they're pitching the contacts. And, you know, when you're getting out of innings with eight pitches and seven pitches, it keeps everybody fresh, and it keeps it exciting for the fans. So. You know, that's what our pitchers are doing. I give Jess Moore all the credit in the world as a pitching coach, but, you know, she can talk all she wants, but if those three and those five don't buy into it, then, then we're not going to be anything. 
Great week for Bulls softball, unbeaten again throughout a big series of games. Big reason for that, the pitching and the hitting of Bulls senior Erica Nunn. She is on the conference honor roll this week, and we'll visit with Erica when we come back on the Coach Ken Erickson Show. This is where the legends live, waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. Welcome back to the Coach Ken Erickson Show. The Bulls on the road in conference play against East Carolina. We'll preview that series with Coach in a moment. Right now we have a chance to visit with Erica Nunn. We have interviewed Erica Nunn, the pitcher, before. Now we have to interview Erica Nunn, the pitcher and the hitter. It's like doing two interviews now. You had batted occasionally mm -hmm. for this team in the past couple years, never with the regularity and with the success you've had this year. Mm -hmm. What's been the secret? Um, I just think I haven't been putting pressure on myself to get hits and I think I'm just having fun and trying to just do what I can and not do too much. Is that easier to bat when you're pitching as well? In other words, to stay in the lineup offensively? It's a little bit different. You don't see a lot of pitchers batting at this level. Um, I mean, I kind of like it. It kind of gets my mind off of pitching at the moment and I get to do something else for the team. So uh, I like it a lot. It's your senior year. Mm -hmm. Does that seem possible? Um, it went really fast. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I'm almost 22 years old. So, yeah, that's crazy. Has this been a rewarding season so far? I mean, team's playing well. You're hitting, you're pitching. Mm -hmm. Seems like it's going pretty well as you head into conference play. Yeah, I think we worked hard in the off season. I think harder than we've ever worked before. So I think it's finally paying off for us. What's it like having a new pitching coach? Um, it's good. She really challenges us to be the best we can, and she puts us in situations that are uncomfortable, that are game-like, so when we get to those situations in a game, it's kind of like, hey, we've been here before. Um, I like her a lot. She, In the fall, she was hard on us because we needed to be pushed, and but now she's our biggest cheerleader. She's on our side all the time, and she wants us to be successful. How are you different as an athlete now as a senior compared to when you walked in the door here for the first time? Um, I can tell you I'm a lot stronger than I was when I was uh, a freshman. And I just think I am more of a go with the flow kind of girl now. Um, if something bad happens, it's just like, whatever, just keep going. Where in the past it was like, well, why'd this happen? Why'd that happen? But I think I'm uh, stronger mind and body wise. More often than not, you are throwing to Leanne Spivey, mm -hmm. and that's kind of neat. Senior going to senior, you guys have been through a lot here. What's the relationship with her like? Good. Um, we can talk to, like, we can say anything to each other, and we won't take it personal. Like, she, she'll tell me in the bullpen, like, hey, you need to do this, and I'll be like, all right. Um, it's, we just want to go out there and do the best we can for our team. So I think that relationship is kind of like we're two, I guess, workers that work together, but on the off the field, we're friends, so. You have seen NCAA tournament mm -hmm. and you have seen no NCAA tournament. How does that drive you this year after missing out last year? It was kind of an odd feeling for even the people that follow the team mm -hmm. last year. Um, it was hard not to keep playing last year but uh, this year I think we're pushing to win the conference and pushing to win the conference tournament so if we can do that then that's a guarantee to get to the tournament so I think we're just trying to keep moving forward and keep getting better. 
East Carolina this weekend. They haven't been in the league that long, mm -hmm. so you haven't had a chance to go up to that part of the country. You're, you're almost going home. Is yeah. that kind of special? Yeah, I'm really happy to go home. Um, I know a lot of my family's come in, and I'm just happy to be back in North Carolina. And it might be a little chilly, but it's all right. Well, have a great weekend up there. Have a great rest of the season, too. Thank Thanks you. a lot for taking time for us. Thank you. Conference honor roll this week for Erica Nunn. She will be with the Bulls in North Carolina against the East Carolina Pirates this weekend. And we'll get Coach Ken Erickson's perspective on that when we continue after this. What am I doing in this royal carriage? I summoned it with YP, the best local app ever with Uber built right in. Conroy, take me to the haberdashery. That's not my name, sir. <laughs> sir. How do I get away with this? I bought tickets directly from the YP app, and with Fandango built right in, I go right to my primo seats with this obscene bucket of corn. Hot. <laughs> Download the YP app. Do it now. When a warm bath is the most important part of your day, count on natural gas. With continuous hot water and higher efficiency, you can savor bath time just a little longer. People's Gas. We're delivering the natural choice more Floridians enjoy. Learn how you can earn up to $1,750 in cash back allowances with our energy conservation rebates at peoplesgas.com slash enjoy. Our thanks to Erica Nunn for taking some time for us. What a season she has had. And Coach, the pitching, not too big of a surprise. We've seen that before, but she had only gotten a handful of at-bats in her USF career prior to this season. A much bigger role this year, and it really gives you some flexibility being able to bat the pitcher at times. There's no question about it. You know, the, the crazy part about all this, and you see what you see from the stands and you see what you see from the, uh, the, the media side of it. But when Erica was a, a player at 1800, I thought she was one of the better hitters I've ever seen. And uh, her pitching was very, very good at that time. But I thought their hitting would fit into our lineup tremendously. And, and so after her sophomore year uh, of college, she, she uh, came to me and she said, you know, I, I don't think I want to hit anymore. I'm like, okay, you know, I, I get that. And I understand you want to, you know, perfect your craft at pitching, which she has done a very, very good job of that. But at the end of last year, she, she came to me and she says, uh, I want to hit again. So, you know, in typical fashion of a guy coach, you know, talking to a female player, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not going to argue it, you know, and just go with it. And, but I also told her that she's going to have to earn it. And she did. She came into fall and she was lights out. She was very comfortable. And, and I think all of that, Jim, has to do actually with the, the aspect of maturity. You know, she's very comfortable right now. She's 22 years old. She's not 18 anymore. She's not trying to find herself in whatever manner you want to try to find yourself in college trying to fit in. She's very comfortable in her own skin right now. You know, she knows what she wants to do um, when, when her education's over. She's got a plan of what she wants to do. But more than anything else, you're seeing her, you're seeing Monica Santos, and you're seeing Leanne Spivey have fun. You know, and that's all you have to try to do with this game. This game is very humbling, and it's going to put you back in the dugout, you know, seven out of ten times for sure, you know, with non-successes, whatever they are in your own head. You know, to me, a non-success is, you know, uh, I don't know. You're, you're always gaining information, so I think it's successful. But productivity numbers-wise and statistics keep it as, an, as a non-success. And more than anything else, the parents are the ones that think it's non-success, not the coaches and not the players. And hopefully the players can keep their minds clear of what goes on and, and if you do that you can have some fun and having fun together with 22 other people uh, that's important I think that's what Eric is doing right now well tell us a little bit about conference play how do you read the American this year as you yeah. step into league play they're all good I mean you know you, you, you've played each other so many times in the past few years you know that everybody's got a good read on everybody so there's no surprises and East Carolina is a scrappy scrappy team you know they got good pitching in, in the top two of their kids and they swing the bat from top to bottom. First pitch swingers, very aggressive. Tulsa's a great team, very aggressive, good pitching. Houston can swing it. You know, they have crafty lefty pitching for them. UCF, you know, a pretty powerful team last year in the RPI. And they got Turnier who can throw the ball real well. And UConn's new coaching staff led by Jen McIntyre. They've made great strides in, in a short period of time. So um, 
golly, you know, you, you, you're hoping just to get successful in your conference because this conference is, is probably tougher than a lot of people's regular season schedule. So, you know, we're hoping to, to play as flawless as we can. I mean, that's the best way to put it. It wasn't that long ago this team was two and seven, and we all understood the schedule, mm -hmm. and your message was stay together, mm -hmm. we're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Well, you're fine mm -hmm. right now after the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Has the team kind of responded to seeing that message come true? You know, I, I think they have. You know, I, I once again, is um, this, this team is pretty good at whatever happened last night it has no bearing on today. And they understand that whatever they do today has a bearing on what's going to happen the next day, you know, in respect of getting better and better. And so their focus has really been, okay, it's done, we're going on, you know, and, and whether it was successful or not, they did that in, even in the first nine to 10 games. You know, I, I thought we didn't play very poorly uh, against the, the, the first nine games. You know, we, we probably didn't get consistent pitching, you know, but they were battling. You know, it wasn't like anybody wasn't trying, you know, we, we weren't getting punched in the mouth and getting knocked down. We just kept punching back at, you know, back at them. And um, we, if you remember also, we were hitting a lot of balls at people in crucial situations in that first nine games. So, you know, we could have, we ended up two and seven. We very easily could have been five and four. We very easily could have been six and three. We very easily could have been, you know, seven and two. So uh, we've stayed the course. I don't think we've made major adjustments or panic buttons, you know, anywhere. Um, and, and like I said, this game is a humbling game to begin with. You just got to play it, you know, as Coach Speak says, you know, one pitch at a time, one day at a time, whatever it is. But more than anything else, we just want to play against the game. We don't want to play against our opponents. We want to play against the game. And whatever the game presents itself that day, that's what we're going to try to accomplish. Coach, thanks. Good luck in Greenville. Appreciate it. Find those good restaurants. We'll follow the Bulls as they go on the road into conference play. And we'll see you again soon with another edition of the Coach Ken Erickson Show.